I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So this week, I'd like to call your attention to the artwork on the cover of the service bulletin. Now, interestingly, when you go out, as you exit later, there are full color images at the two entrances. There's also a full color image outside my office. And what we have learned is that somehow, through the magic of computers, the image on your cover has been flipped. So when I say left, I mean the other left. And when I say right, I mean the other right. The image you have, if you look at it in a mirror, it's correct. If you just, so you're going to have to flip it in your mind. Sorry. Um, what you're looking at is a painting that is the Son of Man by Belgian artist René Magritte. And he painted this in 1946. And even though he mocked the narcissism of self-portraits, it is intended as a self-portrait. The image is of a man in an overcoat and bowler hat, and he is standing in front of a low wall with the sea and cloudy sky beyond. So most notable in the image is that the man's face is partially obscured by a large green apple. Closer inspection reveals that the man's left eye, the other left, <laughs> is peering past the apple, looking at us. His face and eye is not completely obscured. And very oddly, and I mention this because someone will notice it, the left elbow appears to be reversed, bending in the wrong direction. And the meaning of this detail remains a mystery. The apple is, of course, a reference to the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. And the title of the work, The Son of Man, reinforces this view. Magritte said of this work, in a recent painting, I showed an apple in front of the face of a character. At least, it partially hides the face. So there is the apparent face, the apple that hides the hidden face, the face of the character. Everything we see hides another thing. And we always want to see what is hidden by what we see. So this reminds us that not all is revealed. Some things, like the reversed elbow, remain a mystery. And other things invite a deeper examination and discussion. Artists often reveal themselves through their work. A few years ago, the Adult Forum delved deeply into a Henry Nouwen book on the return of the prodigal son. And accompanying this book, the group studied Rembrandt's painting of the same name. And this painting, too, was essentially a self-portrait, as Rembrandt and his life featured in the image. As Nouwen pointed out, the image of the father showed both a strong masculine hand holding the son and a soft feminine hand caressing the son. Rembrandt had portrayed God as both father and mother. So this painting too left many questions by what was hidden in the shadows or obscured from view by a more prominent feature. Visual artists are not the only ones who reveal themselves in their work. This past month, my wife's book club read the classic novel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And Mark Twain's work is familiar to most of us. His real life, as Samuel Clemens, has a bit of mystery to it. At an early age, his family moved, or his father moved the family to Hannibal, Missouri. 
Samuel Clemens wrote about what he knew, his childhood in Hannibal. There is, to some degree, an autobiographical element to Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. To read those books is to look into the childhood of Samuel Clemens. As Magritte said, everything we see hides another. Light, dark, seeing, not seeing, all are recurring themes in scripture. Throughout the gospel, Jesus heals many who are blind. Though in the gospels, not all who are deemed blind are without sight. Some are blind to an understanding of God. The gospel text today is preceded by one of these stories. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. As we read scripture, we too can be blind like the disciples. So often, the disciples don't understand Jesus. The disciples lack the vision to see what Jesus describes to them. What we see can obscure what's there. And sometimes a deeper look is needed. Last week, Deacon Nancy encouraged us to see the gems in Scripture. She encouraged us to notice that glistening piece of the passage that the Holy Spirit is illuminating for us and for us alone. From the same passage, we will each grasp a different gem. But each gem will lead us in the same direction. Each gem will lead us closer to God and to knowing God. Scripture is presented to us for the purpose of leading us closer to God, for the purpose of revealing to us who is God. This past year, the Adult Forum took on the challenge of reading the Bible in a year. And during that time, I kept a small notebook. And periodically, as I read the assigned passages, I wrote in my little notebook descriptions of who is God. How did scripture describe God? How was God presented in that passage? My diligence to the task was not as strong as my intent. Regardless, I have notes that attempt to describe God. The Holy One, my rock, Lord of the Sabbath, the Lord holds us by the hand. The Lord is peace, holy and awesome, help and shield. Each of these give us a glimpse of who is God. As we read and collect in our hearts these descriptions, we can begin to say who is God. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? The Bible reveals to us who is God. 
In the Hebrew Bible, we see God. In the Gospels and in the books of the New Testament, we see God in the light of Jesus Christ. Each gem that we see in Scripture leads us closer to God and to seeing the true God in our lives. And this is the purpose of Scripture, to learn who is God and to fall in love with God. The Bible's not a history book, though it contains historical events and people within its stories. The Bible's not a literary masterpiece, though its writing is timeless, poetic, and beautiful. The Bible's not a how-to manual, though in following the teachings found in Scripture, we will live our lives more fully aligned with God. The Bible is one way God chooses to be revealed to us and to the world. Nature and creation is another way that God chooses to be revealed. But who do you say that I am? The answer is found in Scripture. Creation reveals to us God. Scripture reveals to us God. And to find the revelation of God is also to find ourselves. To find our best selves as God intends us to be. We're made in the image of God. We are Imago Dei. And when our best self shines as God intends, we project to others an image of God. Conversely, we can see in others an image of God. And it should make us giddy with delight to see an image of God standing before us. So, I'm just looking around and I am trying to imagine some of you being giddy, bubbling with joy. This one's just natural. Natural. <laughs> Maybe even tearful. God delights in the world, in creation, and in us. Being giddy at the sight of someone, being their best God intended self, is simply being godlike. Being giddy at the presence of our neighbor, not because they see the world as we do, but because they are created in the image of God is to see God revealed. Being giddy at the actions of love extended towards others is to see God revealed. Finding a gem in scripture, clutching it, and then sharing it with someone is to reveal God so that they might also see clearly. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. Peter's vision of Messiah, a traditional king and ruler coming to take control by force, and God's vision of Messiah are not the same. Scripture tells us that. Scripture reveals to us God's vision of Messiah. The vision's there in Scripture for us to find, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. The artist, the creator God, is revealed to us in all that God has created. But who do you say that I am? Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again. And he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Amen.